Well, when you talk about some memorable moments, you know, for me personally here at the Big A, the series that we had against the Boston Red Sox, people talk about all the time. They still talk to me about that series, especially game game five. But I remember game four, I actually had the game-winning hit in the bottom of the 11th inning, so it was a walk-off base hit. The next game, of course, is the one that everybody talks about. We faced uh, Bruce Hurst. I used to keep a book on all the opposing pitchers. When the game was over, I'd go back and write my notes down. And so for a couple of years, I had kept notes on Bruce Hurst. And he pretty consistently threw me a 2-2 curveball. And um, I think it was the sixth inning. We were down 2-1. to one, And I came up. And of course, the count went to 2-2. Two and two, And I'm just thinking to myself, he's throwing a curve. He's throwing a curve. Wait, wait, wait. And I got out a little bit in front, but I was I kept my hands back, fortunately, because I was expecting the curve. And he threw it to me, and I got out a little bit in front, and I almost kind of one-handed it, but I had enough back to hit it to left center. And as I was going down to first base, I'm going, get out of here, get out of here. Going back is Henderson at the wall, leaps up, it's off his glove and over the wall. Dave Henderson went back, timed it perfectly, he went up, and the ball actually hit him right in the palm of his glove but his wrist hit the fence just as the ball hit his palm of his glove and it popped the ball right out over the fence uh, for a two-run home run that put us ahead two to one. As I came around with that two-run home run and I came here at home plate and Doug DeSensei, he was waiting for me at home plate and I hit home plate and we, we both jumped up and he gave me a high five and it was on the cover of Sports Illustrated and it said, uh, passion and power. We certainly had the passion. We had a powerful team that year. It was just too bad we got, we got cut short there by the Red Sox. We'd love to have got to the World Series that year. Well, you know, another really great memory for me here at the stadium was the first time the Angels won the American League West, 1979. I particularly had the best year of my career that year. It was a lot of fun playing on that team. Donnie Baylor was the MVP. We had Nolan Ryan. We had Frank Tanana. Rod Carew had just come over in 1979. Brian Downing. We had a great team with a lot of great guys. And I can recall the, the final out was a ground ball hit to Carew. Tanana was covering first base, and, and Carew fed uh, Tanana at first base, and Frank caught it and threw his arms in the air, which clinched the American League West for us. It's over! The Angels win for the first time in 19 years with the Western Division title of the American League. And I was playing second base, so I was right there. You know, all the fans were, were, were just pouring onto the field. And, you know, I remember just grabbing my glove because I didn't want anybody to steal my glove, all right? I didn't care about my hat. So somebody came over and just snatched my hat off of my head and took off. I just kind of laughed about that. But I was just sort of just taken in the moment, <clears throat> but nobody was going to get my glove. And we all just kind of came off the field together and we went to the, into the locker room. The champagne was flowing, uh, all the plastic was guarding all of our clothes. Well, soon into the celebration, the owner, Gene Autry, and President Richard Nixon had come down the elevators and they came into the locker room via the trainer's room and there was champagne being thrown everywhere and they actually got sprayed. They both had suits on and they both got sprayed and they kind of just laughed about it and they just kind of walked in. They were reveling with us, right? And I, I looked around, I said, I, I, want to spray, I want to spray Mr. Nixon. And I looked around, all the champagne was gone, but we had a big tub of beer, right? So I went over and I grabbed a can of Budweiser and I popped it open and I went over to Mr. Nixon. I said, Mr. Nixon, I said, this bud's for you. And I poured a beer over his head and it was all coming down his face and you know, kind of going off, off his nose in a big, in a big trail like that. And uh, that photograph went all over the country. About four years later, Mr. Nixon moved to New York. He came out to the stadium to see us and he came in the locker room and he goes, where's Bobby Gritch? And I came over and I said, Mr. Nixon, don't, don't be upset with me. He said, son, I want to tell you one thing. I got more good publicity from that picture of you pouring a beer over my head than any of my press agents ever did. I should have hired you. <laughs> good memories from that first American League West Championship.